Hey, Soul to Sisterhood family. Happy, thankful Thursday. I'm here with my sissy. My sister Stella is one of the 38 featured goddesses in our 36 chapters of the Soul to Sisterhood book. And no, we are not on the set of Hee Haw <laughs> right now. We are standing in a horse pasture that happens to be really sacred ground for both of us. Sissy, why don't you tell everybody where we are? Uh, we are at my dad's house in Southern Illinois, uh, surrounded by our horse family. In the background, we have Joy. Also joining us is Honey. Honey. Uh, <laughs> we'll let you see Stella the horse is over there. And here is Gypsy. And then here is Thunder. So we're hoping that all of them will want to be on camera. We've talked to their agents and managers. And <laughs> <laughs> They've said yes. Given a generous stipend of alfalfa. Right. Um, but I feel so blessed to do this Soul to Sisterhood interview here with my sister at this really special place. Hey, Gypsy, don't knock our camera off. Because part of Stella's uh, story in the book, she talks so much about this equine magic, this equine spirit. Um, and my sister Stella has been such a brilliant teacher. <laughs> you may see me grab the camera from time to time because we've got Thunder and Gypsy very, very interested behind the screen, behind the, the lens. Um, my sister Stella has always been such a conduit for me to learn more about the equine spirit and equine magic, Thunder, step back, um, and how they can really help us and how we can be of service to them. So Sissy, let's Let's start there. Um, usually I start these interviews a little differently um, and get to say why a, a little intro as to how much I love this person and why. And gosh, with my sissy Stella, I don't know that I could even break that down into a few minutes. I mean, she's, she's my everything. I love her. She's my best buddy. Um, we've been through thick and thin together and she's just one of my greatest teachers. So I feel so blessed to get to have her not only in the book, but doing this interview as well. Um, we're going to ask Thunder to go ahead and step out from behind the camera. Um, <laughs> and Sissy, why don't you talk just a little bit about the equine spirit and what it's meant to you? Uh, well, I really don't remember a time that I haven't just been in love with and drawn to and captivated by these amazing animals. Um, something about being around horses in any way just completes me, makes me feel whole, makes me a better version of myself. And you talk about that in your story that you have more successful human relationships because of your equine relationships. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Well, I'm not the first one to say this, but horses are definitely a mirror. Um, they tell us more about ourselves and they're more intuitive about uh, the way we're feeling and the lessons we need in our life than we could ever be. And if we can just be quiet and listen, uh, those lessons always come through. Yeah. You know, um, in your story, you talk specifically, and on her Soul to Sisterhood Oracle card, which all of you have seen that Connie Buckler-Gill created for our Oracle card deck. It's amazing. Thank you, Sissy. Yours is amazing, too. Um, Joy, your best friend, um, besides me, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Joy, your best friend, she's on the card with you. And so, I know. It, it, couldn't, about... it couldn't be more perfect. Well, Joy has been my best friend now uh, for about 20 three years, my, my best four-legged friend. And I'm so honored to have a lifetime uh, spent with her. She's given me more, more service and um, she's taught me so much about myself and she continues to give lessons to me and everyone that comes in contact with her. I was thinking not too long ago about how many people have ridden Joy since I've owned her and I would guess that number to be maybe 500 people that have met Joy and learned from her and she's made a difference in their lives. And you've always said that you and Joy have a really special connection that you can meditatively communicate with one another. That's right. And that she's always gifted you the same two messages over and over no matter what. Yes, yes. When I'm really quiet and I can spend time with Joy and just focus on her, the two messages I always get from her are I can give and receive love freely and I am connected to all things. Wow. And those are just um, 
two messages I hope to always carry with me. What do you think that the human realm can give back to the equine realm as a bit of gratitude for all the service they've given us? Um, just an authenticity of life. <laughs> That's how she feels about it. Yeah. Just an authenticity <laughs> of life um, to never stop learning, to never stop being the best version that we can be, and to be um, grateful stewards to the amazing gift we've been given to have these animals and all animals in our life. Yeah. Well, you say that Joy's, one of Joy's messages is oneness, that sense of being connected to all things. Right. Which is easy to do here. Yeah. I mean, in Southern Illinois, you know, it's just such a special place for both of us. And yeah, you know, out here in these woods that we've been riding horses in for so long. And I know you've spent a lot more time here than I have. Um, that sense of oneness is a, a beautiful connective force, but also that sense of giving and receiving love. And you talk a lot about that in your story, Sissy, that um, opening your heart to receive love has been a big lesson for you. Can you talk more about that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that um, I always had this preconceived notion that you had to be worthy to receive love or you had to... Um, Prove your worthiness or you had to work for it or you had to <laughs> got a little helper again you had to um you know do all these jump through all these hoops and do all the right steps and then good things would come to you but I don't believe that anymore after the experiences that I've had in my life I believe that um goodness is all around us and that we just have to learn how to receive it how to recognize it and receive it and um let that seed of goodness take hold in our life and be the primary force. That's beautiful, Sissy. And um, you also talk in your story that through this awareness of receiving love, um, you've chosen to focus on the blessings and see your life as a big blessing. Yes. And um, <clears throat> I mean, what a gift that's been for you to be able to kind of shift that narrative. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's all about perspective. And sometimes when you're going through the worst part of it, well, I mean, for me, when you're go <laughs> We're going through the worst part of it, there's honey and horsey Stella Yeah, in my purse, probably wanting to borrow a little lip gloss. I tried to change her name to Biscuits because uh, she's cute as a can of biscuits, but didn't stick. Um, but yes, I think sometimes when you're going through the, the thick of the um, learning experience, when you're really in the midst of it, it's difficult to actually see the blessing it could be or the potential it has to change you. Um, for me, it's always an after the fact kind of thing. So I can look back and go, now, wait a minute. If that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be where I am today. And these things were set in motion. Um, so that I could receive the blessing that was the lesson of it all. Yeah, receiving the blessing through the lesson. And I know sometimes those lessons aren't always easy. No. Because you talk about in your story too that you've had some extremely destructive times that you've lived through. Oops, sorry, honey. Do you not want us to talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> You've had some extremely hard, challenging times, times that have been so destructive that your life has ceased to exist in the way that it had up until that particular instance. Um, but you've also talked about that there's been such beauty through that destruction. Right. Can you share right. about that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that uh, the dream I always had for my life um, – I felt like in my early 30s, I'd really achieved that dream, and I felt like I had all my ducks in a row and everything I ever wanted, but unfortunately, that wasn't... Oh, careful. <laughs> Sorry. That wasn't the right time um, for that to come to fruition, and that also wasn't, um, I think, the universe's plan for me, so it was something I really thought I wanted. It all fell apart, but something better has come along, something bigger, um, something more authentic and when I moved home from Colorado in 2014 I moved home basically with my hat in my hand and not really knowing what direction my life was going to take and um, so many blessings have come through 
the destruction of uh, that original dream, although it was hard for me to let go of and I mourned it for quite some time. Now I'm seeing it was all part of a greater plan. And um, sorry. <laughs> This is why uh, they did, They never like to have animals on the Tonight Show. Right. <laughs> okay. Do you want to be on Thunder? Um, well, in your story, sis, you even say that the destruction of that dream, the gift of it, which you've already talked about here, but the gift was it realigned you with a dream that was much more your destiny now. Yes, yes. And I think... Um, I know now through giving up on those things, I have a greater relationship with my family. Um, I'm more connected to um, the people that mean so much to me in a more authentic kind of way. So, so I guess um, what I would want to say is that, you know, uh, there was definitely a lesson and a blessing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and to everything. And I don't mean to giggle about it. It's just these horses are natural comedians. They really, they really are. Um, well, in the destruction of those dreams, you've realigned yourself with your destiny that feels more in alignment with where you're supposed to be now. And you also say that one of the things Joy has always told you, sorry, Stella, is that you can continue to open your heart to even more and more love. Yes. Yeah. And that that's what's happened. As you've opened your heart to more love, more love has come forward for you. That's right. In many different ways, right? Uh, this new relationship you've got with your family, this new way of seeing your life as a blessing, right. and then also a new relationship in your life. Yes, that's right. I'm um, excited to officially announce my engagement to Joey Snow. I am so lucky to have met him, and um, he is just another incredible blessing in my life. Right. Well, as you see, we have loads of horsey love here. And um, Stella's story is just a true testament to her dedication and connection to these beautiful animals, but also their dedication to her. And, yeah. you know, we talk, I've talked about this before with Mary Lou's interview and about kids being drawn to her. And, you know, my sister's pure heart has always drawn in horses and animals. I mean, you've always just had such a gift to bring in these regal creatures and really they trust you, um, they're drawn to you, and they listen to you, and they learn from you because I think you reciprocate all of that energy to them. And it takes a really special soul, Thunder agrees. It takes a really special soul, I think, to be able to respect the majesty of the natural world that we're just gifted to be a part of. So thank you for always being a way shower to me for that. You're welcome. And one thing I'm really excited to announce is that my sister, you guys know from watching this video and from those of you who listen to me talk about Stella all the time, she is one of my biggest inspirations, as is my mom, my dad, my family. I'm so blessed. Um, but one of the things that I have yet to announce, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting my pants nibbled on. Um, one of the things I have yet to announce is that all of the proceeds for the Soul to Sisterhood book or that from the Soul to Sisterhood book and the Soul to Sisterhood Oracle cards are going to go to something that I'm creating, a benevolent fund, and it's going to be called Stella's Fund in honor of this gorgeous lady. And the mission statement of Stella's Fund isn't completely crafted yet, but the essence is, is that I really hope to provide financial assistance to custodial parents men or women. Um, in this case, I've watched my sister be a single mom of three amazing children, my two nieces and my nephew. But to provide financial assistance to the custodial parent, um, as the custodial arrangement is being worked out legally, oftentimes our family court systems in this country don't have a, to, a way to support the custodial parent with instituting um, proper ramifications or boundaries or rules and regulations 
regulations around child support. So child support can go in arrears month after month, and this can accrue year after year until the divorce proceedings are finalized and until the custodial arrangements are finalized. And that can take years. Stella, you're up to two and a half years now? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. With um, not the full child support payment as ordered by the court, um, minimal payments, especially interstate cases tend to get dropped by the wayside. So if one parent resides in a different state than the other, there's a lot of bureaucratic red tape where um, once again, the kids become the victims. Right. So what we want to do with Stella's fund, and it's in its stages of infancy now, but I have done the research and I do know I want it to be a benevolent fund, not a 501c3, um, is that we want to hopefully have a nest egg where we can have a, a, an advisory board um, of soul to sisterhood sisters. And that includes you who are you watching this video. If you want to be a part of it, please contact me. Um, I'm getting nibbled again. I might stick around here for a while. Um, <laughs> uh, a benevolent uh, fund, the advisory board, so that we can provide small, hopefully large increments of financial assistance um, for legal support and for all sorts of things to just support our families in this country um, and especially our children as divorce proceedings finalize and custodial arrangements get finalized so that child support is definitely set and um, not fluid per se, but set and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, re regulated so that without the finalized divorce decree and without the finalized custodial arrangement that child support can still be effect in effect and um, right. happening. So I said that rather poorly, but hope you all get what I'm saying. Anyway, so that is the announcement of Stella's Fund, inspired by my beautiful sister. So much of this book is inspired by my beautiful sister. And when you read her chapter, um, there's a really fun sacred play suggestion um, where you get to step in through a meditator, a guided meditation into your horsey self, your horsey sense. Um, so I can't wait to get to share her chapter with you. So Sissy, thank you so much for being in the book. Thank you. Thank you for being my it's sister. It's truly an honor. Thank you for choosing me as your big sis. I love you. I love you too. Yeah. And we got to thank our horsies. Uh, we got to thank Joy Joy, who's over there. This is Joy Blaze. We got to thank Honey. We got to thank Thunder. <laughs> we got to thank Stella Horse. She's a little busy right now. And back in the back, little Gypsy. So we got to thank our horsey cast and we got to thank you <laughs> for laughing with us through <laughs> all of the, uh, the fun improvisation that we've done out here in my dad's pasture. So sissy, oh, hold on thunder. Let me namaste. Okay. Namaste sissy. I love you. Namaste. I love you. Yeah. All right. Namaste soul to sisterhood family. I love you too. Yeah.